Hey, AQM 101, we're going to start, I'm going to show you, I get asked all the time when we're out on our fillet table, uh, curing eggs, what we're doing different, what we're doing special. I, I, don't, I don't do anything different, I don't do anything special. Uh, I take cure my eggs, I watch a lot of videos, watch a lot of other guys. I try to learn from everyone that's curing eggs, you know, I, I've learned something uh, this week fishing, fishing with Dwayne England up here in Alaska, you know, one thing he taught me, what he uses quite a bit is these puppy pads uh, to cure his eggs on it. It's pretty ingenious because they, they really do absorb a lot of a lot of the stuff. But you know, for me, I always start off the most important things: gloves. Now I'm big and putting gloves on, keeping my sense off of the keeping my sense off the bait when I'm making bait, when I'm baiting hooks. Uh, you know, but sometimes when the bite turns on, the gloves rip. Doesn't matter. You put that bait out there. Uh, get it going. You see here, you know, we're just kind of wrapping down the tail end of the coho season here in the Anchorage Bowl, Ship Creek, uh, Camel Creek's been real good, including the tail race, Bird Creek, you know, we're just kind of kind of wrapping it down. Got my last few skeins, we're going to cure up, get ready. I'm going to show you how I jar and store them, uh, keep them ready for next year. You know, if you remember earlier, we did a little live video, I pulled out some eggs from 2015 that still looked uh, looked pretty fresh eggs. They, they were done this exact same way. I'm not a big believer in, in freezing my eggs. I do not like to vacuum seal my eggs. Uh, I like to cure them. I go through that process. I move them in the glass jars. We get them tight and we store them like that. But without further ado, let's get started. So we got our skeins out here. These guys are pretty cleaned up already. I'm using my pink fire cure. You know, I'm gonna set these up for next year. For, for coho, so we're coming right out the bat. But this is a real simple process. This is what, what a lot of you see me doing on my table, how we cure eggs. I leave the skeins whole. And what we're gonna do is we're just, you know, I'm, I'm pretty liberal with our cure. We get that in there, and sprinkle a nice coating on top. Dust them up real good. This is where it kinda gets messy. We're gonna start picking them up. We're just going to start massaging that cure all the way down in the skeins, getting in each individual row in there. And just working it down in there. Real simple process. This doesn't take long either. And we get it in there, especially when we're, we're curing eggs every day, uh, fishing every day, go through a lot of eggs. You know, just getting that cure kind of worked in. We're going to hit them again. We'll rotate them over. Started using a lot of pink this year. My go-to is always natural when it when it comes to the cohos. These cohos really, really get after the natural. But I found this year, you know, we did a lot of natural, caught a lot of nice fish on natural, and then uh, we started making that switch uh, when they when they started lock jawing on the natural and uh, started going with pink and the pink was working real well a lot of other folks were having success with pink some with with red as the season got a little bit later i don't like uh, as soon as cold season opens i try to try to get away from using using red eggs uh, just because that's what the kings in my opinion uh, that's what they kind of target in on and we find when the kings are still in the system real thick at, when we're going after cohos that we hook a lot of kings uh, using those those darker red eggs. Look at that, we're just going to flip these guys over. Right in the back, just kind of massage them in. That's good to go. got a bag laid open. I always talk about putting my eggs, putting my eggs into Ziploc bags. That's what I do. Look how ingenious. That, that that pad soaked up all that juice, um, you know, before it'd be, be a nice little puddle out there. Forgot my rag. I always like to keep a rag on hand with me. So that, you know, but I don't mind getting a little messy for you guys. So I really want you guys to see this process right there. I got I got them in the bag. So I'm going to keep these. And I'll, I'll let these kind of juice up. You know, what's going to happen is that cure is going to pull out. Uh, juice out of the eggs that renderings is going to stay in the bottom as they sit there um, You know over the next couple hours. They're going to rehydrate back into the eggs I let these kind of sit out for a little bit and I'm putting them in the fridge I, I like to keep them kind of cool 
Uh, let them sit in there for about a day, 18 hours. Every so often I'm pulling them out, kind of moving around because the, they're going to continue to juice in there and kind of moving around in that juice. And after today, I'm going to pull them out. I'm going to pull them out and I'm going to let them dry up. I want them to get a little tacky on top. When I start to film and they're firm, they're not wet. I like my eggs a little, a little more dry. Um, and then, and then we're going to go, they're ready to fish. So that's how I, how I cure my eggs. You saw how simple that was. Sprinkle some fire cure on there, work it into the skein. I leave them whole. I put them in the bags. They're going into the fridge, the cooler. They're, they're going to set in there for up to 24 hours. And I'll pull them out and take a look at them. Once I get them there, you can take a look. You know, I've got some, some finished eggs right here. These are the pink ones, just like I cured right there. Now I'm going to show you how I really... I really store these guys through the winter. Like I said, I don't really like the, I don't really like the the freeze my eggs, and uh, I just take them. And at this time, I'll cut them. I get them into fishable chunks because I'm thinking ahead for next season. I get these into fishable chunks, cut them into my jars. I'm just using kind of the the wide mouth mason jars. We're just going to fill this jar up. Look at that. That's how get that jar nice. I kind of pack it down in there. I found when you go to vacuum seal your eggs, uh, what happens a lot of times is that that vacuum seal and that pressure will pull the uh, pop your eggs, pop your cherries. Um, they'll tighten up when they freeze. So lots of times, then you get you get loose eggs in the bag. They'll start to get freezer burn. I kind of do that. You see that? What I just put in there was. Uh, a couple candles. I've used candles before. I use matchsticks, wooden matchsticks. I go ahead and put those in there. You know what we're gonna do is we're gonna light them now. Let these guys burn a little bit. Get that wax off of there. I'm just gonna take the lid. I'm gonna screw this lid down. When I screw it down, I'm gonna press on the center. Just like that. Now we got a tight seal in there. Matches just or the the candles in there just went out, sucked all that oxygen out. Right there, I'm gonna leave this in the cooler. You can freeze these, although I don't really freeze my eggs. But you can freeze these, pull them out next season. Your eggs are gonna look fresh, nice and tight, just like you just got done curing them, just like they look there. I'll put these in my coolers, leave them over over the winter, pull them out next year. Uh, when we go king fishing, I've got my king eggs already done like that. Uh, I'll pull these out for silvers next year. We, we got some good bait to hit the creek with right away. You just see right there, that's egg curing 101, uh, start to finish. That's how I do my eggs. Uh, it's a real simple process. You know, like I always say, if you guys ever have any questions, uh, feel free to, to send me a message, give, give me a call, uh, just let me know.